Hey, welcome. So, uh, no, it's all right. I'm used to chaos. We're in an EOC. This is where chaos takes place. So, um, hey, welcome back from Thanksgiving break to make sure that I date time stamp this video. Um, but I'm really glad that you're able to join because, uh, as you know, last week we kind of did a soft launch on a brand new communications tool here at the county. Uh, it's called the ECG community, but it's hosted on a platform that is within our Google system. It's called Google Plus. Um, so today I'm going to be doing some screen sharing, going to be talking a little bit about theory, maybe why we did this and, uh, you know, hopes on where we go with it. But we're going to be walking you through how to actually engage on it, how to get information, how to manage your settings. And uh, we'll just take it real slow. Um, if you want to uh, launch any comments, I've got the chat up and running. Uh, so please feel free there and um, we'll get to uh, any questions or comments that are made. Um, with that, um, we'll just go ahead and dive in. So let me set up the screen share. Um, and as I'm doing the screen share, maybe one of the things I should start off with is kind of why, why did we do it? Um, so the reason why is pretty simple. I mean, starting back, so I, I think I've been here a year and um, getting here, when when you look at the array of tools that we've got, all of these collaboration tools, uh, things like Google Drive, Google Docs, Sheets, the ability to comment. Uh, now we've got chat running back and forth, you know, all those tools that we saw during things like the late Christine Fire. Um, the one area that we didn't really see those tools spilling into was concerted internal communications. Things that come from the BOCC, from the admin, from IT, from finance, from um, you know, HR. We, we, we had this system where we were sending out, um, you know, obviously we've got the Friday videos, which I, you know, I make sure to make every single one. I do a little dance whenever they do the guitar intro. Um, but we get the videos, that kind of gives you this quick high level. And then we get these intermittent emails, right? Maybe there's once every couple of weeks we get something from HR um, and we have the Econet, which if you do remote work or you're on your mobile phone or you're out in the community, uh, it's kind of hard to get to. Uh, so you get these one way co email communications and by and large, that's how we were communicating everything important, whether it dealt with your benefits to uh, pay schedule adjustment to uh, it just came in via email. I think I'm not alone in saying that I struggle with email. Um, the amount of email that comes in, having to track it, and the minute that it bounces past that bottom one where it's uh, the number 50, uh, 51 is just forgotten. It goes into the ether. I never check it again, and it just kind of keeps uh, building up. So we wanted to be able to design something that would be easy enough for everyone to participate in. So it still had to be email based. And I'll walk you through today how this Google Plus platform in the ECG community will still continue to work via email. Um, but we wanted to build something that was bigger, that had the opportunity for two-way feedback, that we could do things like run videos, run polls, ask questions, and get real comments back uh, you know, to not just the admin team, but to all of us on, on policy decisions on, on regular day-to-day -day decisions that impact all of us. So that's where I think we kind of uh, got the idea from. Um, you know, obviously one of the things that I want to address right up front is access and security. Um, so from an access perspective, uh, as we go through it, I'll show you how you can access it, the Plus community online. I'll show you um, where the notifications come in. Uh, that they will come in via email. Um, but I'll also talk a little bit about the fact that you can get to it from any web connected device. So as long as you're logged into a modern browser uh, and you're logged into your eaglecounty.us account, you can go to plus.google.com and be able to access this community. You don't have to go through VPN. You don't have to do any special software set up on your computer. You don't have to... Uh, really do anything beyond sign in the way that you sign in just to check your email. It's another application within the Google suite that we have access to. Okay, so from there, now let's talk about security. So is it secure? Short answer, yes. 
Uh, Google Plus is like all of the applications, falls under our business associates agreement with Google. Um, it is rated to be able to handle uh, HIPAA uh, if you're in the healthcare uh, side of the house. Uh, it can handle healthcare related information and discussions. Um, our particular system has been locked down only to eaglecounty.us. So it is, if you are worried about posting something and posting it so that the whole world is going to find it, not going to happen. Um, our system is entirely locked, and the only people that can get to anything within our uh, platform have to be on eaglecounty.us, and they have to be signed in. Um, beyond that, there's even further security. So communities can be locked down. Communities can be shared with only a certain number of people. So we're going to talk and look at the ECG community today and maybe a couple of others. Um, but to let you know, there are communities that are on there. They're just shared with internal team members. And that way, they kind of function like groups. If you're not part of the group, you don't get the messages. You can't see the stuff online. Um, so from a secure perspective, we're good. Um, so we hope that this offers you a number of different flexible options to be able to stay up to date on what's happening. Um, and to do so from any web connected device, including your phone, without having to go through any, you know, brain damage trying to set up or connect. Um, obviously, I am always around to answer questions uh, about the system or really anything, you know, within the Google platform or the other productivity tools we talk about. Please just, you know, make a comment. Uh, I'll show you the buzzword community to do that. Or you can always ping me on chat. Uh, those are usually the best ways of getting a hold. All right, so with all of these small legal text disclaimers out of the way, let's move on to what it is. So Google Plus. So Google Plus has kind of a, an interesting history. Um, you know, Google Plus started off as kind of a, a no effort layer by Google to create a social network. If you're familiar with things like Twitter or Facebook, um, Google Plus was by and large kind of Google's social answer. Now, they came to the game way late. And uh, for those of you that know me, you know that I'm certainly a Google fan, not a cheerleader. They really botched this one. And they've continu continuously botched getting into the social network area. They totally mastered collaboration, docs, and drive, and they've totally blown it on uh, things like so external social networks that engage the public. However, that being said, Google Plus found this life within enterprise and business environments that made a lot of sense. It was integral to the drive uh, area that has been set up, is integral to email. The notification bars are within your environment. It can be locked down to only people within your domain. And so over time, Google Plus morphed into more of a business enterprise tool than it did a social network, you know, on par with like a Facebook. And so what you're seeing right now is Google has pulled back from the social aspect of the, net, uh, of the network, making it public, and they're completely focusing on growing this, this platform, specifically Google+, Plus, as a business enterprise tool. And I think as we go through the uh, individual elements of it, you'll see why. Um, for any of you nerds who have played around with like a Yammer or a Slack or something like that, there are elements that you will see as we go forth. Uh, that'll be really familiar to you. And for those of you who have uh, your only social experience has been Facebook, it's also going to be super familiar to you. So um, so what you're looking at right here is uh, the home page within Google+. So this is my home page, and I'm part of a couple of different communities. There's the ECG community that we're going to focus on, but I'm also part of public health community. And I'll show you uh, the human services community as well. Uh, so the, the, in the home page, you basically have all of the posts in chronological order from most recent to oldest um, in kind of a layered format. Uh, usually two columns if, you're, if your screen is really big. Uh, if you shrink it down, it'll go down to just one column. Um, so the landing page just gives you that kind of burst of chronological to oldest. Think of it kind of like your Gmail inbox. It comes in most recent to oldest. Um, the individual posts are outlined. You can see there's a gray background and then the actual posts are in white. Um, the reason that it does that is because at the bottom of them, there's the ability to comment, the ability to share, you can like it. 
And don't worry, we'll go through the details of the post. But that's an individual uh, post that was made by Dana, which is a very nice happy Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. uh, we did have a really great Thanksgiving, spent a lot of time in the backcountry. It was cool. Uh, struggling to ramp up to full moving speed here on a Monday. But um, so anyway, that was the happy Thanksgiving post. Um, so let's flip over, though, and let's talk about the communities themselves. So there's a couple of different, like everything in Google, there's about nine ways to get to whatever you want to do. So um, you can click on communities to see available communities within the Eagle County system that you have access to. Uh, or if you're already a member of the community, you can go directly to the community by clicking on the link uh, in any of the posts. But I'll click on communities. So when I click on communities, you'll see a number of them pop up for me. Um, this is because we've been actively working with a lot of the departments to set up own communities. Today, we'll be focused on just a couple of them, the ECG community, the buzzword community, and then I'll use the demo or test community uh, with uh, some of the Vince Vaughn stock images. And I'll, I'll talk about that too later. Um, so, but you will see recently visited, and then you'll see your communities. These are ones that uh, you have either joined or are part of. At the bottom, you can click on discover more, and that will actually bring up a list of available communities. So everybody though, should already see the ECG community. So when you launch the ECG community, you just click on the little card there. Um, you'll see over here that it says 40 members, two groups. Um, so part of the reason and why we rolled it out right now was the way in which Google is moving into businesses is that they've started using Google groups as a way to automatically add uh, member lists to the community. What that means is you don't have to do anything. So we've already added you. Uh, IT, Jake and Roy have been huge help in getting through all of the different settings and getting this up and rolling. And uh, they helped me set up the Google groups for the all user groups automatic, uh, automatically so that all of you are already part of this ECG community. Weirdly enough, you don't even have to visit it. Um, starting you know, last November 20th, um, any post that is made to the ECG community is automatically going to be uh, show up in your notification bar as well as in your email. Um, so for those of you who only want to continue to receive email, you don't plan on providing feedback or engaging, just send me the email, let me get on with my day. Cool. No change. Your life is going to be exactly the same going forward that it is today. Um, for those of you that want to engage, the emails and the notifications that we'll walk you through uh, have several different options to be able to. So in the ECG community that we're looking at, um, I have, well, the background image is the logo. And if uh, Ken uh, is watching, um, Ken, I'll reach out if you have a better idea because I'm not a graphic designer. And if that doesn't work, cool, we'll change it. Um, on the left-hand side in the community, and you know that you're in a community because the top bar is green, works out cool for me, that's my favorite color, so good. Um, on the left-hand side, you'll see this kind of navigation bar, right? So it'll have the picture, it'll have the member lists. Uh, the 40 members are the people who have actually piloted the communities with me over the last three months. Uh, so don't worry if you don't see your name there, you're already included because you're part of the group. Uh, you'll see the group title. Um, manage is if you are a manager, that's where you can actually uh, get in and tweak some of the tools. But you will see um, the about community and the filter on the left-hand side. So these are important. And these are places where I'm actively looking for your feedback. I took a stab at setting it up, but I'd love any options or ideas that people have to grow or expand. Um, I'll start with the about community. So under about community, uh, you'll see a number of different tools. Uh, essentially, I went through my bookmarks list and <laughs> kind of dumped it in here. And so you'll th see things like Econet, like the Eagle County website, ADP, Board Docs, Employee Handbook, uh, which seems to be the gospel. So everybody has to go to that. Uh, New World, Repair Link. So you've got kind of your standard set. Um, you'll also see two tools that are listed um, that you haven't or maybe you haven't seen before. 
Uh, the very top one is ECG Forms. So ECG Forms, I'm very excited to announce, has been something that we've been working on uh, internally. If we click on that, it is going to take you to a Google site. And really this one, for me, started out of frustration because um, I work remote and I work out in the field quite a bit and I have to fill out forms. And it was really frustrating for me to be on my mobile, not be able to pull up a form, not be able to engage where I was working from home and I couldn't blog. I had to go through a VPN. I just wanted something simple. I wanted something that worked on my mobile device that was set it and forget it. As long as I was signed in, I could do stuff. Similar to the way that Drive is, you can get to it from any computer. This ECG Forms page is mobile friendly and it is set up so that you don't have to log into VPN to get to any of the forms. So we scoured Econet, I talked to uh, you know people in finance, I talked to people in HR, and I took all of the uh, forms that I could find and we've migrated uh, a, a copy over to the Google environment so that if you need to fill out a form, you don't have to go to a VPN to go get it. You can click on any of these forms and it will open up in a Google Drive document. Uh, and we've done some really creative things with this. So I'll pull up uh, appropriation change request, right? That's a familiar one to some people in the room here. Um, so under finance appropriations change request, if I click on that link, you'll see that I get prompted with a copy document. So in this case, when you click make a copy, it is automatically or automatically um, going to create a Google spreadsheet that looks pretty much similar to the appropriations change request that we're all familiar and in love with. Um, but it's created in a Google Sheets format um, and it has specific instructions. You can fill it out. It'll tabulate just the way that uh, your forms that you've come to grow and love. Uh, will do. You can type in your reason for a request, and then you can simply share the document with the budget department documents, and that will share the document with uh, finance so that they can get access to it. So uh, we've also done a couple of things here in case you need the department head to authorize. You can have them type in their name. Uh, if they need to approve, they can just check, check a box. So I tell you this as giving you a sneak peek to a movement that's happening to bring our services online in new ways that are easier for you to get to no matter where you are. Um, so on the mobile device, these do stack. You can get to them from mobile devices and everything is run out of your mic. So in time, you'll see a lot of uh, things flipping over into Google Forms. You'll see Google Spreadsheets. Uh, some of the ones that look like they came out of a dot matrix printer you know, 15, 20 years ago, some of those have been uh, PDF still, are uh, the ones that we can't convert. But I just bring it up as something to pay attention to, and we're going to be working really actively on this uh, to make sure you can get to anything from anywhere. So I'll go back to the community. And under About Community, the other thing that you're going to see is ECG Cloud Search Directory. So when I went through uh, the analytics on Econet, and I was looking at options that we could raise to the surface within the community that would make life easier. I was looking at things that were clicked on pretty heavily. The employee directory uh, is one that gets clicked on uh, a lot. In fact, uh, interesting enough in the search results for the analytics, a lot of people type the name in and then they hit the blue button on Econet uh, to do the search. And so that's actually just searching Econet. So you actually have to click on the button and look it up from there. But anyway, um, if I click on cloud search directory, uh, this will bring up uh, Google's cloud search and it should pop up as soon as I start. There we are. All right. So uh, Google cloud search. If you've never seen this, it's cloudsearch.google.com um, and it is a Google search that is limited to your uh, activity within the Google uh, Eagle County .us environment. Um, so, for example, let's say that I wanted to look up, uh, let's see, look up, look up Bria. <laughs> so, if I bring that up, what I'm going to see is I'm going to see um, 
I'm going to see the results for uh, Rhea on the right hand side with her desk telephone number. I can click to chat or email to her. Uh, and then I'm going to see a list of chronological, um, starting from most recent going back, um, all documents, sheets, emails, calendar events, you name it. Anything that's associated with Rhea is listed here. But I can also go and flip over just to Drive or I can go to calendar and I can get isolated uh, responses just for uh, Raya on Google Cloud Search. So as more and more items show up, uh, and maybe let's see, so here, uh, this is the Total Health Alliance, and I just wanted to look up some information regarding the Total Health Alliance. I know it is the acronym of THA. I bring it up and I've got uh, the spreadsheet folder. Here's the Google site. Here's a form for it, a uh, spreadsheet. Um, so I've got all of my items right there. Uh, plus, uh, PHA picked up Brittany Thatcher. So uh, in case, uh, Brittany, you uh, happen to be watching, didn't mean to bring you up into the THA. So um, anyway, I just bring that up as a really useful tool that the more and more that we migrate uh, to Google, and I think the plan is by Labor Day of next year uh, to have that as our primary office productivity tool. Most of you are aware that IT is uh, running a massive uh, migration off of servers and putting things into team drives. So the more and more that gets to Google, I think that cloud search is going to be something really invaluable for you from, from a personnel uh, standpoint as well as a document. Um, so I will then flip over back. And let's go to Cloud Search, starting page. All right, so we're back. So um, so under About Community, you'll see the links to all of those uh, you know, launch points for those different applications. Uh, we can change these. If, if we don't have this right, let me know. And uh, we'll go in and put in some links that maybe got overlooked. So uh, be happy to do that. Next, underneath uh, the about community, you will see filters. So by default, um, the filter is set to all posts, which means that you're going to see all of the posts that are part of this community. But let's say you were just interested in the uh, culture uh, posts. So if you click on culture, what that's going to do is it's actually going to isolate all of the posts that are specifically tagged with culture and do that again in that chronological most recent to going back. Uh, so under culture, you know, it's funny, we, 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 when we started creating it, we were like, culture, what exactly is gonna go under culture? Turns out most of the posts have actually been under culture. Um, and this is where we're bringing new stuff. Uh, sometimes it's a weekly wrap up. We just did a uh, 360 degree camera tour of the Mira bus. Uh, so for those of you that haven't uh, been able to go out in the community and see the Mira bus in action or uh, been on a tour of it when it was here, um, you can click on that and you can actually move around. You can look at it on your mobile phone and, and get a really good sense of the depth and, and breadth of uh, all the things that the Mirabus is doing and how it's doing. Um, there's a lot more in the 360 to come. I've got a long list of places that I want to go. Uh, you'll see interviews. You know, one of the things that we just started is a walk and talk session. And really, this is because over the last year, probably the most painfully apparent thing that has uh, popped up is that innovation is not something that's being directed or happening it, it, at, at, you know, like a, uh, at, a, at a high, high level. Where it's happening, where it's really, really, the, the machinery is rolling on innovation is at the front line. It's the people that are engaged with either technology or just processes, uh, or they're engaged in the community and doing amazing, innovative things. And, and I've been continuously impressed and uh, fascinated by some of the stuff that I've learned. So, uh, so I decided to just start going out and interviewing people. And uh, everybody's got a story to tell, and we've already got several cool stories that I think not only will you learn something about the person, but you'll learn something about what they're doing in their program that you might be able to apply to your program. You know, for example, uh, Marie over in public health, uh, we've been able to work with public health and develop a receipt system that um, 
doesn't require you standing in a uh, scanner and taking all of your uh, receipts for hours every month and compiling them and then uh, putting them in an email and sending them. We actually developed a system where they can just use uh, their camera uh, on their phone. They take a picture, they email it off, and then automatic magically it gets uh, kind of lumped together at the end of the month and uh, sent to the system. So if you want to learn more about that and how you know something similar might apply, uh, take a look at the uh, walk and talk with Marie. I thought it was really cool. Uh, so you'll see, oh, that was the other one too. We're also doing interviews with new employees. Um, you know, one of those frustrating things is you're walking down the hallway, you've seen this person a couple of times, you know they're new, you're not really sure what they do or where they work. Man, let's just solve that. So I'm working with HR. Uh, when we have the new employee orientation days, uh, I freak them out for a minute or so, come in, throw on a camera, and, uh, you know, ask a couple of questions. But it's just designed so that we get to know each other a little better. Uh, we know where we work, kind of generally what we do. And uh, hopefully I find that, I hope you find that really useful. Um, so that's how you filter. Um, and so um, you'll see admin, BOCC, uh, comms, culture, department office updates, events, finance. You know, we're just getting started in this. And what really happened on November 20th was a soft launch so that you could see the platform. But going forward, major announcements from, you know, finance, from uh, comms, from HR uh, are all going to be routed through here. So you'll be able to isolate them. You'll be able to see all of them. And then let's talk a little bit about how we go in and uh, comment. So that is the basics of the ECG community. There's nothing more whiz bang than that. Um, I'll flip over to another community to actually show you the comments because we've added all 500 employees. And if I start firing comments off, demo tests, it's going to make everybody super angry. And I don't want to do that. The exact purpose of this is to avoid people being all angry. Um, so we're going to flip over to a demo test community. Um, if you're not a Vince Vaughn fan, sorry, you're going to see a lot of Vince Vaughn here. Um, and uh, if you're not familiar, Vince Vaughn did a movie several years ago where they did uh, kind of uh, joke stock photos because stock photos are so bad. Uh, and so they did this whole series and they're free to use. Uh, so anything that you work with me on a project and we need a picture for a placeholder, you're going to see a Vince, Vince Vaughn photo in it because uh, that's great. Um, so, so when you come to the community and you want to make a post, you'll see your picture um, that's right up by the main image. Um, and it'll say, what do you want to share? Hopefully that's a good prompt as to that's where you kind of start. Um, if you want to make a post, you can click on that and it brings up that little info card window. You'll see that I'm within the demo or test community uh, to be able to make this post. And it's as simple as starting to type. That's it. If you're going to make a post to a community and it's just text, you type it and then you hit the big blue button that says post. Nothing more you have to do. The notifications, the emails, all that stuff will happen uh, in the background. There's nothing you need to do for that. Um, so let's say that you have another Vince Vaughn image that you want to add. Uh, thankfully, there's a lot of them, and you can add, like, per se, this one. Uh, as soon as the wheels stop rolling there, this is my favorite one because it is the exact face that normally when I'm giving presentations, about a quarter of the room has given me. Uh, so anyway, the uh, that's how you add a photo. Um, you know. If you're if you're engaged in social media at all and you want your stuff to be read or actually have people pay attention to it, photos are a really good way of doing that. Uh, do not be surprised if in the coming months uh, uh, we use this as an excuse to go over and take uh, you know a morning look at uh, puppies and kittens. So I'm just saying that might happen to people. Um, so that's one option. You can add a photo. Um, some of the other options is you can add a link. Um, let's say you were sharing a document, a PDF that's stored in Drive. Let's say it was a website. Whatever it is, you can grab the link off of that and drop that in, and it will show up as an attachment. Um, you can run a poll. 
Uh, in fact, I have a poll that I'm going to encourage everybody who's watching uh, to participate in. So I'll take you there in just a second. But if you want to add a poll, uh, create a poll. You can add an image to your different options, but you can have option one, option two, um, and done. And you'll see that it's already set up option one, option two. And then the readers uh, can actually take a one click action to signify, you know, yay or nay on any given issue. You're going to see a lot of these moving forward. I think this is a really powerful tool for getting uh, immediate feedback on uh, you know, decisions, policy issues, uh, and I've seen some really creative uses of them online, um, and it'll avoid you from having to fill out you know, a um, once a quarter or once a year 50-page uh, survey. So you just take it really quick, hit a button, keep on moving with your day, but make sure that your, your uh, feedback is in. Uh, so I'll take that off. Um, if you can add a document from Google Drive directly, uh, and that will bring up a little window where you can add, insert a document. Uh, then you can add a location. Um, you know, the, I don't know that every day I'm gonna show up and check in here at the main building because it's kind of where I work, um, but I can see a situation where if we had another Lake Christine fire, and we had multiple incidents going on and people were distributed, or maybe it's an emergency where we want to know geographically where people are very quickly, we could very easily run a uh, post and have people geographically check in uh, uh, so that we know, you know, kind of where you are. Uh, so there may be some interesting creative uses there. Uh, I can guarantee you there are some 360 videos that will be check in by location. Uh, I'm planning on heading out to Avon, El Jebel, uh, over to the landfill and doing some really cool behind the scenes stuff uh, if you haven't been able to get out and see some of those facilities too. So anyway, that's how you post. Uh, so I'll go ahead and discard that. Um, so now I'm going to flip over into how you comment. Um, again, pretty straightforward. Uh, it'll it'll show your face and it'll say add a comment uh, down at the bottom. And to add a comment, you say um, something insightful or hilarious. Um, once you do that, post and Brandon Williams threw in something insightful or hilarious. Um, you can make multiple comments. You can also add links, add photos, and, and pretty much everything that you'd want to do on a post. Um, but super helpful if you're going back with a team or if we've asked an open-ended question that we're really looking for feedback on or you have comments that you'd like to follow. Um, so that's kind of how uh, the actual posts and comments work. So I will now flip over and show you a demo of so you should also be able to see in your discovered communities list, a community called Buzzword. Yes, absolutely a smart ass name for that community, uh, intentionally so, and uh, you could check out. The, the Buzzword community is nothing more than a group of people who are into innovation, they're into productivity, they're into technology, you know, whatever kind of your gig is in making things better, uh, buzzwords kind of the place for you. Um, and we're routinely looking and posting ideas, uh, examples of other projects that are going on, launching polls. Um, you know, one of the things that has struck me after being here for a year is that there's not, we have all of these amazing tools that are at our fingertip, but we haven't really had a robust training environment to learn how to use them. Um, what you're seeing today is an outgrowth of the buzzword effort. Um, and so, in doing that, what I'm really keen to do is get your feedback on going forward, how do we build a training program that meets your needs or meets your interests or gets you information where you are? And there's a bunch of different options out there. And I've, I've listed some of them in a poll. Uh, this poll is pinned. You can see that little push pin up at the top there. It's pinned to this community. A pinned post just means that it sticks up at the top. Uh, so it's something that usually the community is really actively seeking feedback or it's a message of some kind that you need to see. Um, but it will it will kind of be sticky up at the top right of your page. Um, so in this quick poll, you'll actually see uh, some options on training. Um, 
you know, we, we've been doing these uh, kind of classroom things in the EOC, uh, but we also have the ability to do short online videos. And you may have seen in the email announcement for the PLUS communities, um, I tried to respond to the feedback from this specific poll by creating four very short online videos that walk you through each of the major segments of uh, Google Plus and how a community works. Uh, so curious to know your feedback. If that was, if you voted on this, um, I'd love to know your feedback. Was that what you had in mind? What was that, if that was what you were looking for? Um, one of the other things that we're looking to do is certainly conduct some more classroom type trainings, maybe not just during lunchtime, but during normal business hours. I would love to be able to get into departments and offices and really do challenge work. I don't think just, um, you know, just doing a three ring binder training session is all that really useful. I think challenges are the best ways to learn where you identify something that your office is struggling with. We sit down, we look at the tools and we evaluate how they might solve that challenge. So you, you solve something, but you're also learning a tool in real time and getting your fingers dirty and, you know, hopefully having some fun at the same time. And it looks like that's uh, something that uh, several people who voted are also interested in. So I'd be, gr I think it'd be great to throw together something uh, along those lines. Um, you know, online uh, knowledge base is something that uh, uh, a lot of people tout is being useful, and it has received exactly zero votes. Uh, so that tells me to pull back. I'm going to show you an online knowledge base, uh, but I'm definitely not anticipating a high degree of use. Um, you know, one of the things that I wanted to do was do some open house um, kind of online or on site. I sit at a desk and you can kind of come by at your own leisure. I'm there for like four hours and you can come by and look at. Turns out nobody was really interested in that either. So glad we didn't waste any time on that. But if that's something you're interested, please, I'm going to leave this open. I would love your comments. I'd love your votes. And uh, I think it'll really help us put together training programs that really meet what you need. So in that spirit, in buzzword. Uh, so that's an example of a post. Uh, but in this buzzword community, you'll see I post all of the trainings here. You can watch them in the pages. We do a lot of pro tips. If you're doing, uh, you know, formatting, we've got uh, some of the culture announcements, but there's just a lot of really in-depth, hey, pilot type stuff or how do I uh, type stuff. And you can obviously post to it and ask a question. And there's a lot of really great people, uh, both within IT as well as located within departments that I'm sure will jump in. Um, one of the things I will bring up because it is uh, the, uh, the uh, Cyber Monday, uh, um, do take a look, please, if you do nothing else today, please take a look at the Black Friday and online security post. Um, I worked with Jake Clearman in IT and you know really uncovered some uh, some things to be aware of when you're acting online. And I'm not talking about from a personal, uh, professional perspective. I'm talking about your personal. So I went through and found the links for some of the two-factor authentications, security measures for things like Amazon, eBay, PayPal. Um, and I've, I've listed those in that, uh, in that post uh, so that you can hopefully uh, increase your online security, even in your personal life. So uh, take a look at that. And I'll be continuing to post as I find stuff there. Uh, some of it was pretty horrific. So um, anyway, under the about community in the buzzword, uh, similar deal to the ECG community. You've got the buzzword session videos. Um, clearly that title didn't show up. So right after this, oh, I'm down to the next line. Uh, there is the how-to videos for the ECG plus community. But I also created a training request form. So under the training request form, uh, and thanks to Ken for throwing together the background and stuff there. Um, and what you'll find on here is a form that identifies a lot of the different applications and tools that we have by, and then you can identify your department and office, what your comfort level is, you know, basic, intermediate, advanced, and what you're really hoping to get out of a training. If you submit this, I will reach out to you. We will find some times that work for you. And whether it's a series or a one-off, or you just want to do like a workshop challenge, uh, please, I, I'd be more than happy to do it. So um, looking forward to growing some, growing some capacity and knowledge there. Uh, so let's flip back over to the ECG community. 
Uh, but go feel free to join Buzzword. We did not automatically add everybody in the Eagle County uh, domain to Buzzword. Uh, there is a lot of back and forth there, some good stuff, but I didn't really want to pummel you with it. So um, feel free and periodically we'll pull stuff from some of the communities over. Um, but now as the last section, what I want to talk about is notifications. So notifications come in a variety of different ways. And Eagle, I mean, the, the um, Google Plus system, when it launches and when you're added, is going to automatically do notifications in two very specific ways. One, you're going to see notifications pop up in your notification bar up here. And you'll see, I actually have two. Uh, so Hollis and uh, Laura had, uh, and Chris had uh, posted here. So all you have to do is click on that little, if you've never seen the bell icon, uh, it will light up red if you have notifications. And when you click on it, you'll just see a list of them. Um, if you click on those, it actually breaks down in the uh, drop down. So why is this important? Because it seems redundant. I'm already in the community. Why do I want to see a breakout on the same page? It's like being in the bathroom with mirrors and it's all confusing. So why you would want that is because when you are in, let's say you're in Google Keep, your notification bar is there. Let's say that you're in, uh, let's see, Drive. Guess what? Notification bar is there, right? So uh, your notification bar is there. It's in Gmail. It is literally everywhere you are in Google, your notifications are there. So you never have to visit the ECG community to stay in touch. Your notifications are right there in your browser, no matter where it is, what amazing thing you're doing at your, at your work that day. Um, so that's one place that the notifications come in. The other place they're gonna come in is via email. Um, so I don't know about you, but I'm kind of particular on how I want my notifications to come in. I don't need everything that I own buzzing every single time somebody makes a comment. In fact, it's pretty content specific for me. Um, I like to get highlights in email because I get so many emails, it's kind of nice to have it condensed. And that's like a reminder if I've missed something um, to kind of go check it. Um, if you go to settings, uh, and I'll show you that one more time. If you're in the ECG community or your Google Home, you click on those three little lines and you go down to settings. When you get on the settings page, you're gonna to wanna to scroll down to where it says notifications. So this is where you control what you get and when uh, from Google Plus, specifically from the community. You can go really in depth on this and you can make it hyper personal or I'll walk you through my settings. I think they work, but um, if you wanna mirror those, awesome. So I choose to get all of my push notifications in my web browser. I live in Google, I live in Drive. This is the easiest place for me to quickly check and keep going with my day. It's even easier than email because I don't have to open up separate uh, window and tab over and get to it and stuff like that. It's within the window and I keep going. Um, now on email, I choose not to get occasional updates. I don't need occasional updates. I just want the information that people have actually intended to post. And I choose to get only highlights from the communities and collections I subscribe to. So that means that in my email inbox, on a periodic basis, and it usually is gauged by the amount of traffic that's been posted to the communities. Maybe once a day, once every couple of days, I get an email, it gives me a quick summary of all the stuff that's been posted, and I can choose to click and go read further, or I can you know, skip it, hit delete, so I've seen that already, but it's just kind of a safety net for me. It comes in, I see it, and I keep moving. Um, now, I choose, um, to turn off a lot of the uh, notifications uh, or the, the big uh, items on my phone. But if you'll see, if I click on communities, I do have a notification when it invites me to a community or someone adds me to a community. Um, you know, I'm getting those notifications uh, through, there is a, uh, unshot, surprisingly, there's an app for this. Um, and the Google Plus app is great. Uh, I love it. It makes it really easy. It is absolutely not necessary. Um, you can in your browser on your phone, whether it's Safari or Chrome or whatever it is you use, 
You can log into your Eagle County account, go to plus.google.com in your phone's browser, and you can get to the community. You won't have to do anything special or, you know, you know, uh, face towards Eagle or anything like that. You just have to log in. You'll be able to get to the uh, Plus community. If you want notifications and a little bit more activity, highly recommend checking out the phone app. Really cool, super easy to use. It's pretty lightweight too. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's how you manage your notifications. But you can get super granular. You can decide exactly the types of mentions, but only on a Friday or something like that. Uh, so you can go pretty specific. I just keep highlights and the notifications. In my browser, and that, seems to, that seems to help me out. One of the other ones that I will uh, all also point out is the um, stream right above notifications. Um, you can restrict to single column there, but the more important one that I'm gonna point out is this bottom one, the amount of suggested posts to show in your stream. I choose none. I only wanna see the stuff that people actually posted or they tagged me in or something like that. I like to keep it lean and clean. So um, I turn off the extracurricular stuff, keep only to those notifications that I want. And uh, that's kind of how I run it. So. Uh, let me go back. And we are back in the ECG community. And uh, so I do have the poll on the training pinned right now up in the ECG community. Would love your input there. I see there's already been a couple of people that have voted. Um, and I am logging in here to another computer that is next to me so that I can. Question. So I can answer. And there doesn't appear to be. Well, great. Wait, let's stay connected. Hey, how do you post multiple photos? Thanks, Abby. Let's <laughs> flip over to the Vince Vaughn special. All right. So we're back over in the uh, Vince Vaughn demo test community here. And you'll see that if I click on the upload photo, uh, I'm going to select. I already had some of these because uh, I use them pretty routinely. Uh, and we'll go ahead and post those three photos. You just select the little circle uh, in the photos. You click done and it will uh, automatically add them there. And I'll click post. And the multiple photos will be loaded into a single post. So uh, we've also done stuff in the past. Uh, we probably will do so in the future, particularly if we have any more um, emergencies or large scale exercises <laughs> where we had uh, photo libraries in Google Photos where people were uploading photos to a central library. In that case, uh, we, we I'd probably make an announcement. We'd have a photo library and then you'd just be able to automatically upload them to that library and they would uh, automatically upload them to the page. So, um, Hope that answers the questions. Um, I'm excited to see what multiple photos you have to throw on the community. Um, anyway, I'll leave it open for a couple more minutes. Um, I can tell you about my weekend. We did a lot of cross country skiing. The Nordic centers, uh, some of them have been opened and we spent a lot of time in the back country and uh, eating turkey. Incidentally, uh, my favorite thing is not the actual Thanksgiving dinner, it is the turkey noodle uh, soup that we make afterwards. And uh, we intentionally buy a bird that is far too hard for our family so that we can eat the case. So that's what I'm having tonight. Uh, don't worry, I'm not gonna take multiple photos of it and load it to the ECG community to show everybody the turkey noodle soup. However, if you're curious, I can definitely uh, post the recipe. Up. It's an innovative use of uh, turkey carcass. Uh, all right. Well, with that, it doesn't look like there's anybody else just pommeling questions. So um, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. And I really appreciate the time. And I hope that, um, you know, we'll go through this. It'll probably be a long ramp up. We'll start communicating in the uh, community immediately. There's probably going to be a couple of polls and some posts uh, this week. And we'll start to get everybody accustomed to it. Um, likely there'll be a handful of early adopters that uh, will post a lot. And then over time, suddenly you'll realize that um, you're getting your messages there and you're totally comfortable breaking you out and your life. So that's it. All right.
Thanks.